What's up guys, Alec out here. I hope you enjoyed the video. I made it after work, I was a little tired, so excuse that. I just wanna fill you guys in and say, a lot of it is just my opinions and I just wanted to express that to you guys so that you're not just, oh man, what the heck, da, 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 da. You know, get calm your shorts, guys, all right? This is my opinions. I'm gonna fill you in on what I think about these cameras. Based on that, make your own decisions. Now, grab some popcorn and enjoy the video. What's, oops. What's up, guys? Zalakai. What's up, guys? Zalakai here. And I'm redoing this video because I realized when I was editing it that I had about 20 to 30 minutes of me just talking. And I had a little bit of B-roll, but it kind of was overkill with all the talking and rambling. So I want to cut this down, cut to the chase, talk about each camera, and tell you the strengths of each, the cons of each, and which one's for you. So I'm going to start off with the Canon 80D. Here we have, it was a good deal, $650 plus tax, came out to $700. So for the deal, I really loved it. I can't say I want to keep it because I haven't really used it as much but knowing that you can get Canon EF lenses so easily so cheap that's one of the awesome things about this camera body you get an ASP, ASPC size sensor which is a step down below full frame so you're not getting full frame but you're still getting a really good lens a really good sensor Really good body, it really feels good in the hand. It's got a nice little groove for your thumb right here. It just, if overall it feels nice. You have the flip out screen. It's real smooth, it fl it's real flush with the camera body. Amazing finish. You have a mic input and a headphone input. Uh, camera remote, yeah, the USB, HDMI. Everything about this is amazing. If you don't wanna use the optical viewfinder, you can also use the electric viewfinder and use the screen. So you have either or, hot shoe mount. I just, I love the feel of this, the weight of it, just everything about this camera screams amazing. I also love that it has the card slot on the side. Uh, let's see, you have a battery, big, big size battery. This can, if you're just shooting photos, you're not recording video, this could probably last you all day. And if you are shooting video, it could probably last you all day. The only drawbacks to this camera, you're only getting 1080p at 60fps. No higher, no faster, no 120fps, no 4K 30fps, none of that. 1080, 60fps, that's it. End of story. So if you want any crazy cinematic slow-mo or high res, you're not going to get it. You're still getting really high megapixel count. You're still getting an ASPC size lens. Size lens which is really really good and a lot better in low light than a lot of other cameras the autofocus also Canon dual pixel amazing definitely if you're a vlogger or a one-man team check this one out on to the next one the GH5 everything about this camera screams premium but not premium for a one-man team if you have people you're recording, you have people you're shooting with, you have other people you're recording, and just in general, it's easier to use as a manual focus camera. There, you can use the autofocus, but you're not going to be able to pull out your camera. Boom, boom. Oh, I got the shot. No, no, no. You're going to miss it because you don't know if the camera is going to catch the focus right away. Or if you did get it, but as soon as you got it, the camera is going to lose focus. That's the problem with the GH5. Overall, it's still a really great camera. You're getting 4K, 60 FPS, 180 FPS at 1080p. It's everything about this is great for cinematography and short films, commercials, any kind of real film work rather than just your everyday YouTube use and vlogging. It does have the flip out screen for vlogging. This camera does have an amazing finish. You have both dial buttons. Everything's sturdy about this. Weather sealed. You have your HDMI. You have your USB type C. You have a headphone jack. You have a mic jack. Wait, where's it at? Oh, the mic's up here. Mic jack up there also. You also have dual SD card slots. So if you want to record either 
one and then the other one is a backup of what you're recording on the first one you got that or you can record two sd cards full footage all day long battery also on the bottom large battery you can shoot for a long time if you're shooting 4k 60 fps battery does drain quickly but it still lasts a really really long time the camera feel of this one you get a good grip to it it's a good size it's a little lighter than the canon ADD but you still get a good grip to it a good weight everything just feels in its spot like it works the little joystick right here is really good too helps out sometimes when you want to use it for focusing or when you are like this you can still use it and this dial right here I love it it's buttery smooth the knowing that you can hear the clicks and like oh, okay I know I'm using it definitely a plus yeah but the only drawback for this to me is the autofocus I have no other problems with this camera okay on to the Sony a6500 sorry GH5 you gotta go I'm gonna start with the camera body I like how it's so small the portability of it everything about it just screams take with me everywhere camera going to your kids basketball games going to your daughter's weddings going to family events whatever it is you're going to a lot easier to carry than either one of these the only problem is ergonomically it's kind of on the small side and not very comfortable to hold sure you still can get a grip on there but it's not as nice to hold in your hand like this one is or the GH5 Possibly if you get a battery grip, if you could get a battery grip, it might make it a little better, but then you lose the portability factor of this. That's literally my only gripe with this. And also this camera does not have a flip out screen like these two. So you're going to get that. And yeah, that's about it, which I personally don't care. But for a lot of people, if they want to use this for vlogging, you're kind of crap out of luck, man. You have a HDMI over here, mini HDMI, USB type B 2.0, and a headphone jack. Over here there's nothing, and down here is the downfall of the camera to me. I don't really like it. That is the battery. Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? Honestly? This is just, come on, Sony, like, really? That whole thing, and that's all, that's all you're giving us. If you're shooting 4K at 24 FPS or 30 FPS, you're going to chew through these like nothing. And also, this is where your card slot is, which it's not the easiest to get out. It's still not bad. You can still get it out, but I really wish anywhere over here. Come on, the other side, up top, down below somewhere else just not right next to the battery it is what it is i can live with it i know on the new model cameras the a7 r3 and the a9 those both have improved this feature so those cameras you're gonna get something better this this is all you're gonna get and the battery like i said sucks too small doesn't last if you're shooting a lot expect to buy a lot of batteries autofocus though amazing great for one-man teams one-man shooters if you want to vlog with this you can but you're not going to be able to see yourself you're not going to be able to flip the screen and be able to check yourself out oh yeah hey what's up guy you're not going to be able to do that you can buy small monitors such as the small hd what small hd focus that's what it is you can buy the small hd focus and it's a five inch screen that goes right on top goes into the hot shoe right there and then you can see yourself but it do you really want that it depends on you now let me quickly go over one other thing with you guys and then I'll tell you my choice out of all three of these Canon lenses a lot cheaper so, such a wide variety of lenses from expensive to cheap to wide angle to cinematic to everything you, you're gonna get a lot for Canon Sony the really good lenses are freaking expensive you're we're talking about anywhere from two to four grand for a lens that costs maybe 1200 to 1400 here maybe 
Okay, I'm there. I'm good. I'm good, man. Sorry, guys. A little too much caffeine, not enough sleep, but I'm ready to roll. Micro Four Thirds lens. 12 to 35 used, you can get about six, seven hundred dollars. That's a f2.8. Uh, 24 to 70, which is, I would consider the equivalent to this. I'm not sure the focal length multiplication for these cameras as much as I am this. I believe it's 1.67 or 1.7. So, uh, 20, but a 24 to 70 on the Sony F2.8, I believe it's the G Master lens, is $2,400 brand new. I think you used maybe 2,000, 21. I haven't really looked into use, but brand new, it's ridiculous. Brand new for this one's even $1,100. $1,200, I think. This one, brand new for a 24 to 70. $1,400. So used, about 11 maybe 12 Actually, no, I take that back. I think it's 16 new, but you can get it around for 14 used. 13 used, maybe even less, depending on where you find it. The good thing though is with these cameras you can adapt Canon lenses. So say you want to start with a GH5 or an A6500. You can use the native lenses but also buy Canon lenses with a speed booster or just a regular adapter. The Sony has an MC11 adapter by Sigma so you can attach Sigma and Canon EF lenses to this system. It makes it awesome. You can use the autofocus, you can use everything with it, just like as if it's a native lens. It's it's kind of exciting. So that's awesome. And I think that only runs you about $200, $250 for the adapter. This one, on the other hand, you're using a Metabone Speed Booster. You don't need to get the Speed Booster, you can just get the Metabone's adapter, but I think that alone is $300 or $400. More than likely, you're better off spending the extra $150 or $200 to get the actual Speed Booster. And with that, you're getting extra stops of light, which creates just, you, you get a better lens. So if you attach a Sigma 18 to 35 to this with the Metabone Speed Booster, instead of it just being a basic lens with double the focal length, you're getting a reduced focal length with more stops of light. So instead of 1.8, you're getting up to 1.2. All of these cameras have their pros and cons and likes and dislikes, but I'm gonna have to say my favorite is still Mmm, it's so hard. I really do like them both. Well, I mean, I really do like them all. I'm gonna have to say, for vlogging purposes, the A6500, because it's lighter, more compact, and just easier to carry around. For everything else, I'm gonna have to say the GH5. For any kind of B-roll, any kind of cinema, any kind of where you want more control of it. If you want more autofocus, you're a one-man team, vlogging, the A6500 is where, where to go. I really want to like the ADD, but I don't think I've spent enough time with it. Body-wise, I actually like it better than these two, like ergonomics. It's just, it feels way more comfortable in your hand. Other than that, I'm going to have to give it to the GH5 and the A6500. Price-wise, that's what you're going to get. This, you can buy, I'm going to leave a link down below, for $650 for a refurbished bundle through Canon for this and two lenses. This, I got for about $800 used Amazon warehouse deals. So you can find it used, you just have to keep an eye out. And this, you can find used about $1,500, maybe $1,600. But brand new, this is $2,000. Brand new, this is $1,200. Brand new, this is about 1100 with a kit lens. So you get what you pay for, but depending on what you need it for, this right here could be the perfect vlog, blah. This right here could be the perfect vlogging lens, I'm telling you, it could be. It just depends on if you want something heavy. The lenses aren't light, the camera's not light, but if you're okay with that, right here is the perfect vlogging camera. You could do everything. You got your autofocus, you got, honestly, perfect YouTube starting camera. But that's all I got for you guys. I know I kind of still ranted on over and over about things, but i just a little excited about talking about these. I really wish I got more time to shoot. I'm going to try and push myself to 
I guess you could say, get a little less sleep and try to not be lazy and get myself out there. Because as of now with work, I get too tired. I end up staying home, cooking something and watching YouTube. So I'm going to try within the next few weeks. My New Year's resolution is going to be getting myself out of the house, going places, shooting video, making friends and just having a good time and enjoying myself with my new hobby that I'm having a great time with. If you guys did like this video, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a thumbs down. It's gonna help me out. I'm gonna learn, figure out, well, maybe I need to change things, whatnot. If you have any tips, leave a comment down below. If you have any comments on these cameras, leave a comment down below. But if you can, like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.